How long does it take to be a good photographer? Stay tuned. Let's find out together. Many years ago, I met a man who was a pretty good photographer in his own right. He invited me over to his home and he wanted to teach me some photography. And we sat down in his living room and the first thing I asked him was, uh, how long does it take to be a good photographer? And he just looked at me and kind of frowned and said, well, if you're lucky, 10 years. And I just looked at him, 10 years? What are you, nuts? I'll have this nailed in a couple of weeks, a month tops. And, you know, I was half joking, but not completely joking. And he looked at me and he frowned again. He said, you know who Ansel Adams is? Do you know who Ruth Bernhard is? Do you know any of the great photographers? Do you read any photography magazines? Have you ever worked in a dark room? Do you know what composition is? Do you know how to adjust the light with your aperture, with your shutter speed, your ISO, any one of the three or all three together? Do you have any idea? Well, I don't know. Now, this was back in the film days, and he was going to teach me his dark room. And he said, how long do you develop film? Well, I don't know. How long does it stay in the stop bath? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm here, so you can teach me. And he just laughed and he went, 15 years. <laughs> I just laughed again. I said, all right, two months. So how long does it take? Well, I guess it all really depends. If you take nothing from this video, if you log out in a couple of seconds and don't stay to the end, I'd like for you to take away a couple of things. And one is to learn how to shoot manual. Shoot manual on your camera. I don't care how fancy your camera is. I don't care what it does, what it doesn't do. The best thing that ever happened to me was having to learn how to shoot photography on a Pentax K1000. And for some of us old timers that have been around for a while, you might have smiled when I said that. The Pentax K1000 might have been the best camera ever invented for a beginning photographer to learn photography. It forced you to learn the basics, your ISO, your aperture, your shutter speed, how it all interacts. And I don't care how fancy your camera is today, it still works the same way. Now, the newer cameras, of course, you can set a lot of things up and it'll just do it for you. To this day, I still shoot 95% at least in manual. Occasionally I'll shoot shutter priority or aperture priority, but most of the time I'll still shoot in manual. But the point is I know how to do it. When I want to go to aperture priority or shutter priority, I know why I want to do it. So learn the basics. Learn how to manipulate light using those three things. It's critical in learning to be a, a good photographer. The other thing that he told me was, only show them your best. Don't show them your crap work. Well, I'm going to break that rule today. I'm going to have to show you some just because I want to show you how I got started. And since the title of this was The Evolution of a Photographer, that's what we're going to talk about. Which it wasn't until I got the K1000. My dad bought it for me one year for Christmas. And I started to learn how to use it shooting baseball because I loved baseball at the time and I had just moved to South Florida and I would go to spring training games. One of the first games I went to was a night game. And back in the film days, your ISO was the speed of your film. And I had ISO 100 film because I didn't know any better. And it was a night game. And I had this crappy old lens that was maybe f5.6 at best. So in order to get proper exposure inside the camera, my shutter speeds were half a second, quarter of a second. And so, of course, a batter swinging the bat for half a second in the light, everything came out blurry. And I got all my pictures back and I was thinking, what the heck happened? Well, I didn't know the relationship between ISO, aperture, 
and shutter speed. So it was an expensive lesson. It forced me to then think about, well, why did this happen? So once you learn about that, it takes care of a lot of your ills. Another time I made a mistake was I went out and bought really expensive Kodak Ektar 25 color film. Great film. And it was a day game. And my lens, again, was 5663. And even though it was during the day, it was still a little overcast. So my, so my shutter speeds were still, oh, one thirtieth of a second, one fifteenth of a second, I think. And everything was still blurry. And so I still thought, well, it's daylight. Why is this happening? Because I had very slow film. And that's your relationship again with your ISO and your shutter speed and your aperture to really understand that. So if you take nothing else away from this, if you want to learn to be a photographer, learn that. Learn the relationship between those three and shoot manual for a long time until you're really comfortable. And then you can switch to one or the other. So after shooting baseball for a while, I then got into volleyball because my daughter was playing volleyball. But by then I understood shutter speeds so I could go indoors. And I also understood the value of a little bit faster lens. So then we can debate all day long, is gear important? Yes, gear is important to some extent. You know, depending on what you're shooting, if you're going to shoot indoors, you need a good lens. You need a fast lens. Or again, you're not going to be able to get fast enough shutter speeds unless you pump your ISO really high. And back in that day, I was shooting with a Nikon F5, still shooting film, and then eventually a, a D700, which is a great camera. But still, you didn't want to push the ISO too high. So I ended up eventually getting a, a, a 2.8 lens. And then I went to a 1.8 lens. So you're going to learn that. So is gear important? To some extent, yes. Can a good photographer get a great image with less than average equipment? Of course they can. But it's a whole lot easier with better equipment. So I shot volleyball for a while. I shot football for a while. But by then, I already had a good understanding of my equipment, which is vital if you want to learn to be a good photographer. And I also was starting to develop my own style. In the middle of doing all that, my buddy always used to accuse me, say, oh, that's all you do is shoot birds and baseball. And it was true. At that time, when I was learning, I was just shooting birds and baseball. Eventually, what happens is, not only do you shoot birds in baseball, but you develop a style and you start to see things differently like I did with birds and I did with baseball. The image I was, images I would take in baseball, rarely did they have a bat or a ball, but you knew it was baseball just by the way, you know, I would, I would arrange, arrange the image or at least I tried to. But that was a style thing. And then you start to learn Photoshop a little bit. It helps create your own style. So I went through that phase. When my buddy first taught me, it was always black and white. So I saw everything in black and white. And I would recommend, that's another recommendation for somebody, is shoot a lot of black and white. Even if you shoot on your card in color, convert it to black and white and think in black and white. And I know this is going to sound strange, but in the end, it helps you understand color a lot better, in my opinion. If you're really good at black and white, you're going to be even better at color. So what happens after a while is, after shooting in black and white and learning the dark room and learning your relationship between your ISO and your shutter speed and your aperture, then you start to advance a little bit. You start to understand things a lot better. You start to understand light because you have to in order to be a good black and white photographer. And then you start seeing abstract. You start seeing shapes. You start seeing forms. So when you switch to color, you see it in color. And you see the textures and all those things that come with it. 
And then eventually what happens is you learn better technique. And maybe you get into Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever program you use. And you learn how to stitch images together. Maybe you want to learn how to do panoramas. You learn how to do better processing, post-processing, I should say. So you start to learn those things. And all along, you're learning how to add depth to your images. You're learning how to put in leading lines or maybe a strong foreground or mid-crown or background so that you have separation. That's how you create depth, or at least one of the ways. And all the while you're doing that, you go from shooting the first thing you ever learned, which for me was birds and baseball, and you go to landscapes, you go to seascapes, you start to see other things. And because I shot so much sports, portraits were easy for me. To go over to portraits was pretty easy. The other thing is, then you'll start to travel. You'll have a better eye for when you do travel, for street photography. So my another bit of advice would be to shoot anything and everything. I mean, I know there's people that are wedding photographers and, and uh, sports photographers, and they, and they eventually migrate to one thing, and that's all great. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying don't do that. But what I'm saying is that in the beginning, if you learn to shoot anything and everything, it's much easier to migrate to those other areas if that's what ultimately you want to do. So I guess in the end, what I want to say is when my buddy says 10 years, now I look back and laugh because I think it's a lifetime. I don't think you ever really truly learn. You learn to get better. You learn techniques. You learn what works. You learn what doesn't work. And you can learn to be a better photographer but I think the day that you sit and say, okay, I'm done. I know everything there is to know. You're just fooling yourself. So I think it's a constant learning. And I think that's good. And I think over time, when you do start to develop your own style, then you'll feel as though you've really accomplished something. And maybe you consider yourself a good photographer. That might take you two months. It might take you 20 years. It might take you 30 years. Everyone's going to be different, but the fun is in the journey. I know a lot of people say that, but it's very true. The fun is in the journey. It's the enjoyment of learning all these processes. And then in the very end, what happens is you think you got it all licked and you watch a video that says, hey, infrared, why don't you try infrared? And you try that and now you're starting all over again. You have to learn again how to deal with the color in the infrared or the non-color, I guess. But then you start all over again. So again, it's a learning process and then you have to develop a style for infrared. It's a never ending journey and I wish you well with it. I know mine's gonna continue. And until next time, take good care.